Vegeta is an interesting guy to talk about. He's evolved considerably throughout the course of the show and, quite frankly, is rather complex. He's an incredibly deep character that exemplifies why DBZ is so good at character growth. And of course, there's been a hiccup or two along the way. Two honorable mentions this time, the ocean dubbed Bardock story explained last time, and Sleep with Super Vegeta in Raging Blast. God look at that shoulder meat. I'm Jericho and this is the top 10 things DBZ wants you to forget about Vegeta. Number 10, Vegeta's debut colors. Set the clock back a few years to Vegeta and Nappa's debut in the show shortly after the fight against Raditz. So you notice anything weird? Namely Vegeta's colors being fucked all the way up? Now to be fair, this was way back before Vegeta's colors were shown in the manga, so Toei had to think on the fly. But this color persisted all the way up to a few episodes before arriving on Earth. This is higher up on the list because some recent games make a callback to this, but it remains here because Kai went out of its way to give Vegeta the correct colors, the little scamps. Admittedly, I do find the obnoxious orange hue is charming, but let's leave this here before someone gets inspired at Toei. Number 9, Skip's Transformations in the Super Saiyan 2 design. These were originally separate entries, but both warrant mentioning. Vegeta and Super Saiyan Transformations have a sort of complex history, with some amazing forms like Majin and Super, but some are outright missing from the main story. Notable examples are Super Saiyan 3 and Super Saiyan God. No, no, not Super Saiyan Blue, but that red form Goku had previously mentioned in Goku's video. If you remember GT, again, I'm so sorry, he bypassed 3 altogether using a blood wave generator to reach 4, although it's never confirmed if he can access the form again. Whereas Vegeta's Super Saiyan 3 form, it was only ever in the games. Right then. Now, as for Super Saiyan God, it was shown for a bit in the manga looking like the sand equivalent of a skeleton, and became Super Saiyan Blue shortly after. Yeah, Super Saiyan God Vegeta was never in the anime. At all. Not entirely sure why, but sure, let's go with it. Oh right, the Super Saiyan 2 form. The Boo Saga had a bit of an issue with this form. Namely that in the manga, every character that had a form was caked in lightning so you knew exactly when someone was in the form. Since, let's be honest, there's seldom ways to distinguish it otherwise. Cut to the Kid Boo fight, and Vegeta goes to fight Boo in order to buy Goku time to power up. Virginia is currently in Super Saiyan 2. Now let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. If you're having trouble distinguishing it, don't worry, you're far from the only one. Luckily with Goku, the form is a lot more noticeable with the altered bangs, but Vegeta? Yeah, not so much. Number 8, the Batman shirt. There's been a lot of interesting outfits worn by characters in the show. Here's Goku with simultaneously the best and worst one in the show. Now here he is with a really cool jacket. Ditto for Vegeta. Now let's look at... Interesting. Okay, I know the joke is Vegeta's armor is currently unavailable, so we had to wear what was on hand. But either Bulma put a red and white shirt in the wash, or Dr. Brees wears his outfit in his downtime. It's just funny to think someone has a pink shirt that says Bad Man. Again, this has been in games as of late, so it's higher on the list, but never forget, this was once worn by the Prince of All Sands. I say as Vegeta wore Binky and Super, but I haven't gotten there yet, so shut up. Number 7, Saiyan hair never grows. It's hard not to talk about vegan and not mention this. There isn't too much I can say here that hasn't already been done by awful DBZ memes or by Team 4 Star, but let's get some context. Shortly after coming out of the hyperbolic time chamber, Goku observes how Trunks' hair grew in one year time span, but vegetables didn't. He explains that pure blood Saiyan's hair never grows from the day he's born. Mmm, that's a whole lot to unpack right there. Temporarily shelving the idea this is an early Funimation script, let's analyze this a bit. Vegeta grew a mustache in GT, duh. Goku and Vegeta had beards in Super after training for... something, again, I'm really far behind. Vegeta's hair is noticeably bigger as an adult than as a kid. Was Raditz born with that carpet he calls hair? Also, Nappa had hair when he was younger and most likely grew that beard. Unless he was born bald with a full goatee. Okay, let's take the idea back down from the shelf. I understand this might have been translated badly or something, but it's still explaining a concrete fact why Vegeta's hair didn't grow and Trunks' did. Let's just move on before we start getting the idea of Broly growing more hair. Number 6, he was a bit of a dick. Did you know Vegeta is a prince of all sands? He may have mentioned it once or twice. So Saiyans were known for being warring assholes back in their heyday. Take these aspects, slap one helmet ego onto it, and you have Vegeta. Here's just a small list of things he did around the Sand Saga. Nuked a plant full of bug people that just won their independence. Slaughtered at least one Namekian village looking for the Dragon Balls. Ransacked Frieza outposts while looking for Goku. Tortured Gohan, and many more. If you watched DBZ for more than a collective 5 minutes, then yeah, this is nothing new in the slightest. Vegeta was the biggest antagonistic force in the franchise up to that point since King Piccolo. However, with shows such as Super and games like Dragon Ball Heroes and Xenoverse, they might be keen on you not remembering just how many innocent people were actually murdered by the psychotic freak. Oh hey, there's Vegeta blowing up hundreds of innocent people at the World Tournament. Moving on. Number 5, his continuously shifting opinion on Goku. It's no secret Vegeta made Goku his rival in life after Frieza was defeated. 
I mean, Goku did kind of rob him of his original life goal, so he seeks to be stronger for validation. It's also no secret he mellows out from having a family to accepting Goku as being better than him. Break out your tinfoil hats, boys! Here's a line graph of Vegeta's bitterness to Goku. Now going from the Saiyan Saga up to the Android Saga, you have a pretty consistent tone of his character. Once Majin Vegeta happens, or rather once Vegeta knew he sold himself out, really he should be on a lot more level-headed, assuming the head was still there since he kind of evaporated. Come being brought back by King Yama, he's pissed that he killed himself for nothing, but the animosity for the Goku's back. Wait, what? Then the Kid Buu fight happens, and he accepts Goku as being his better. There we go. Then Frieza comes back, and suddenly Hadrick's back again. I just... What? Frieza even full-on tries to recruit Vegeta since they were being dicks to each other. And, you know, Vegeta is totally gonna agree to that. <coughs> now, Vegeta's moral compass and development is what really makes him stand out as a great character in anime and manga. Arguably one of the best in show and anime. However, I think Toriyama is a little too eager to keep that spark alive. Nothing wrong with wanting to best Goku, of course, but can we tone it down on the wanting to kill Kakarot scale? Pretty pleased? Number 4, he's really easy to dupe. Now, let me open with this. I'm in no way insinuating Vagu is dumb. However, the man is quite prideful, something that has gotten him into trouble more than a few times over the years. Once upon a time, Vegeta felt that his, Gohan, and Krillin's powers combined were more than enough for Frieza after he transformed. Yeah, nope. Style tricked Vegeta into letting him absorb Android 18, letting Vegeta think they'd be close in power when really Cell's power dwarfed Vegeta's. Lastly was Boo, where Boo upon hatching deeply disturbed Goku while Vegeta struck him off as a quote, sideshow. Again, I want to stress that pride is one of the things that make Vegeta as a character, and his wantings to prove his strength plus protect others are in constant conflict. It's just a shame his pride has landed him in hot water more than once. Number 3, Breathing in Space. This one's a travesty of continuity. So during the Frieza fight with Goku, right before Frieza nuked Namek, or rather, tried to, he said he can breathe in space, but Goku cannot. Okay, seems fair, right? Organic matter has a really hard time even existing in the darkness of the void, but, um, Toriyama has some explaining to do. In the arc immediately after this, Vegeta's out hopping between worlds looking for Goku, as most concerned lovers do. Oh hey, there's Vegeta flying between two celestial bodies with no atmosphere and no protective apparatus. Here he is also standing outside of his pod about to blast the planet. These were filler? No worries, I got you covered. Here's Barak flying outside Frieza's ship in space announcing his rebellion. Here's Goku at full on orbit around Earth with Beerus. Now look, what Saiyans do with their lungs is really none of my business, but I think maybe Frieza should do a little fact checking before bailing on a fight. Number 2, he's been beaten by every movie villain. As a Vegeta fan, this pains me to no end. You ever see the DBZ movies? Pretty good stuff all around, save for some occasional stinkers. The movies usually follow this pattern. A major villain shows up, plot develops, Goku and crew go to fight them, villain transforms, losing battle, one more all-out attack against them, and roll credits. It's a rather simple formula, but effective at conveying a plot in less than an hour. Now as for Vegeta's participation, uh, no. On record, not counting Resurrection F, Vegeta has never even been standing on his feet come the end of a major fight. Broly, Bojack, Rudigarn, Android 13, and Metacooler. Vegeta has been dominated by every one of them. Janemba is of course excluded because he was half responsible for the outcome, as is all the other movies he was in around for. I'd almost actually count Resurrection F because if not for Goku and Whis, Vegeta would have been dead with the world being blown up. Oh hey, Frieza figured out how to blow up a planet. But this, of course, isn't the worst of Vegeta's problems. Number 1, he has never scored a major kill, and here we are. As you may have surmised from prior entries on this list, Vegeta has never scored a significant kill throughout the course of DBZ, as well as GT. He was thoroughly dominated by Frieza, duped by Cell into absorbing 18 and losing, and blew himself up against Boo, but to no avail. Here is an actual picture of the main wins Vegeta has scored throughout the show. As mentioned before, he's also never won against a movie villain. Even his own son killed all the androids in the future after going back. Is this a potential indicator of Toei and Toriyama putting Goku too much in the spotlight? Maybe not, but at least some accomplishment to hold over his rival would be nice. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go look at that Batman shirt to feel better. That's the good stuff. <laughs> 